this setup can lead to a lot of really good things. Um, while looking at what happens right now in Needed Zero, I'm I'm a little bit kind of like pulled back on because of I I have a, a very obvious suspicion of where it will go. But at the same time, I'm interested to see like how it will go exactly. So in this chapter, uh, we got a lot going on, uh, pretty much for everybody in the cast, even like small like hint and hype pieces. But anyway, it starts out, you know, with Shiki and Omora, and they're they're gonna go against this guy Garrett, who's well, you know, one of the uh, the guards inside of the mine that they you know they have to go and get like a hundred thousand uh, stone value of uh, of their mining pieces in order to escape, and seemingly now they they're gonna scuffle with this dude. And he's, he's pretty sadistic, obviously. He's a, a bodyguard with, like, a weird leather mask and and a whip. This guy's not going to be friendly. Uh, he's not going to be polite at all. He's just a very odd guy. And he's, like, whipping around no more. He seems to really get off on, uh, like, just causing pain to women. Uninterested in Shiki, who's unhappy that this dude's beating up on his friend. Uh, that's part of the chapter that seemed to go... More of like, you could just TLDR that really quick, you know. Uh, they had a little scuffle with that guy, Amor gets taken, Shiki's like, I gotta go help. But they know now that uh, <laughs> that they have ether gear because it, Amor has shouted it out while talking to Shiki to like, keep this part of her, her plan a secret. But as she is, you know, just says her thoughts straight out in the open, and now uh, whatever, like, the series has that could seal or turn off ether guy just to be some form of emp like device like small emp like collar some shit be it would be something around that or maybe like a concentrated version of you know a different method because like even though like ether gear is rare it's still like used uh to a degree like seemingly enough that you would still like want to keep uh want to keep a way to deal with it be you know in case you run into that problem well, like in terms of like a guard or a uh, any form of like confinement, like a prison, whatever it may be. But anyway, uh, a lot of the meat to the chapter, I think, came from the interaction with uh, who was this uh, Scarlet Woman is what kind of like seemed like it was, but it, it it seemed like more like it was supposed to be a title, but it was just the way that fan groups were translated because like the name Kuranai, and that makes more sense because she's like very Japanese themed. Uh, so she has, like, this part where this guy brings, like, a, a male suitor, and he, you know, he's pretty much being sold off. The dude's a piece of meat that she may, may or may not, like, partake. Uh, she's clearly a very, like, influential, important person, a, you know, they're trying to, like, there's some effort for her to try and find, like, a suitable dude, but she's gonna be, like, wanting whatever her ideal, like, perfect thing is. She's, like, has this dude pretty much just get naked, come up to her. And like you know, trying to uh, trying to seduce her, you know, win over her favor, but he touches her without her permission, and uh, she's like, "Nope, fuck this guy, I'm done." And as this kind of like moment where he's worried about like you know damage to his face, because the dude's a model and like a butler, so him having a messed up face is clearly going to yield like damage to what he can and can't do in the job world. Uh, it doesn't work because of the fact that now she knows, like, how much he fears that. She just goes through with it, scorches this dude's face. Right up. Though I, f I feel like, though, Eden Zero, like, thinking about it, there there's such an advanced uh, world with, you know, space travel and all this stuff. I, I feel like they'd have skin graphing down and, like, do a T and be able to fix that dude's face. Especially if he's, like, some rich model dude. I don't know, I guess it depends if he gets off the planet alive. Who knows? Uh, but, you know, whatever, not important. Uh, what's more important is while well, she's talking to, like, this dude Ward, or is, I'm more curious to know if it's, like, supposed to be, like, his name is Ward, like, the pun on, like, her Ward, or she's just referring to him, you know, because he is her Ward. I, I, either way, she's, like, talking to him about Eden Zero, she's asking about the ship, uh, it, to this dude, like, he's never heard of it, and he's like, oh, I'm surprised, I mean, you've been to, you've apparently been to so many planets, you know, you're well-versed and like, uh, uh, just knowledge and uh, knowing important things throughout the cosmos. And she mentions that Drac and Joe is after it, and it has an ether drive, and they mention it's like an ether drive, the concentrated energy is like 10 times like what a planet uses in like a year. Some crazy number, or at least like what they could mine up. Actually, I think that what they said is uh, the value number. 
So it's probably instead of like, because the, the, the fan, I read the fan translation and the official one. The fan translation made it seem like it was like a super concentrated energy source. Whereas the official translation uh, makes that more like it just value is that high of number, but we don't know exactly what it like could do. Is it just like a maybe a, an energy source that will you know perpetually like continue to make energy? It doesn't need to get refueled. Maybe that's a special thing about Eden Zero. Uh, I don't know. We'll find out. We'll probably get some more information as it goes, since that's apparently the driving force of uh, you know of this. Uh, this arc so we'll probably figure out more of like is it like an energy source that's just like absurdly high is it you know a continuous loop is it because like it's it's uh there's a, a factor to it that'll let you leave the cosmos you know get past dragon balls who knows uh we'll get there eventually but she's like planning uh you know in the fact that dragon joe is involved in this that you know he's he's cutting her 30 percent she's like yeah i don't really like that number i'm only interested for a hundred she wants to outwit him. And the thing is, like, it seems logical in her mind because she's not like, oh, I'm just, like, some rich person. She seems very intelligent. Like, she runs a planet. She has to be intelligent and have a system set up. She obviously thought of, like, how it all works. You know, you, you mess up on her planet, you're either going to get straight up erased or you have to work off a huge debt, which uh, gets her whole, like, trade route mining supplies uh, all figured out, you know, if you want to get out of that kind of, like, hard work, slavery almost, like, life, versus, like, the, the more happy side, which is, like, gambling and, and, and you know, uh, restaurants and stuff, stores, you know, all the more, like, happy luxury parts of business, and then, like, on the back road, all the hard, like, dark manual labor areas, but it's, the thing is for her is she's, like, I'm gonna train out with him, and beat him in in business, trying to figure out how to, you know, get one up on him. The thing is, unfortunately for her, because it's, like, a cool thing for her, for her character, because it's like, okay, yeah, she's smart. She probably is, like, devising a strategy right now how to, out, uh, you know, how to win one over on Dragon Joe, get the Ether Drive uh, from Eden Zero, and win in the day. So she, it's, like, it's a cool aspect for her character because it, you know, puts a level, extra level of confidence. You know, it gives her kind of, like, a, uh, like this more like tactical villain who's just like oh i'm always trying to you know get five steps ahead of my opponent or my competitors but at the same time draken joe is one of the erasians say galactica he's he's one of the like most powerful villains in the uh, entire cosmos whether that ends up being solar system or galaxy or whatever the cosmos translates to be it's still a really impressive title and as well as he just seems all around not only uh strong you know he's he's Obviously, got to be powerful to hold that rank. Uh, he's got uh, ether gear, very powerful, and it's alchemy based. Uh, but he's also definitely very smart. If he's got so many connections with all these big wig characters, like, and he's got this uh, clear, very strong business uh, sense of person, very strong like reputation, knowledge, connections. It's. I think she, she's delving. I think Kurt and I is just delving too much into something that's not like it, it's way out of her league because Drac and joe versus like what we could get from other uh, members that are actually going to say it's galactica maybe like one it's like straight up like they have a higher supply of wealth or they're more powerful or they have more special weapons they have a a better like uh set of minions or ships you know whatever their whatever their corner is that puts them on level of rascal says galactica it seems like Draken Joe's entire, like, character, like, specialty is being smart. He definitely comes off as he's going to be, like, the very, like, decision-making character. The very much, like, thinking the big picture of what's going on. What will put him ahead. And unfortunately for Kerr and I, she seems much more like... She seems much more like... Oh, I'm going to be respectful and follow this and, and, and you know, do what I can to, to turn a profit, like, respectively, but also in, like, a ways of, like, upping her own reputation, her own, like, confident self, like, value level. Draken Joe just seems, like, way more of, uh, like, a big picture layout, like, just thinking all the chess moves so that people he operates is, is trying to, you know, formulate because of this and just like the way that probably like the demanding levels of him keeping up with this many big people that you know he's got uh pockets in 
it, it just kind of like spells danger for Kurida because I feel like she's gonna have like one of those things in the arc where it's like, oh, I did all these things and I've, I've got you, Dragon Joe. I'm going to beat you. And then, uh, you know, maybe I'll become one of the rats on Sace Galactica, and, you know, take your spot or, uh, you know, do whatever her, like, uh, end scheme is for this goal. Because this, like, the thing is, like, it's on this planet. So she seems like she could be the arc boss, but Dragon Joe is like an overarching boss, somewhere where it's like you're going to see him over parts and then his big piece way later like if if this arc ends with uh you know him defeating her and i like destroying her in her sense because both of them seem like boss characters like arc boss characters but because they're on her planet it seems like she's more confined of this being her arc where dragon joe's is going to be way more overarching so i'm just i'm very interested in like the interactions between these two where how their layout is going to go and like what dragon joe is gonna do in response to her trying to one-up him because he's like i'll give you 30 percent. all you have to do is find him and uh, you know uh, help me find the ship i'll do the rest you know he seems like he's just cutting her a good business deal and she's like oh yeah i'll take it but she's gonna like try and backstab him whereas dragon joe doesn't seem like he's a like a raw backstab character he's much more of like a has things like set up in preparation if his uh client business partner does try and backstab him not like he's like i'm planning on betraying you and be dishonest he's like i hoped it didn't have to come to this but i'm prepared for it because that's just the way that dragon joe comes off and one of the things about him that will just has his raw potential and ties in of like where he as a character is uh is going to be different than a lot of Oshima's other villains like just that business mentality and uh and steps in place in case of like you try and betray my trust and that's just gonna be really cool for him but then we get back to like the ship uh not as interesting like i said like it, the big interest at least for me is this whole thing that drac and joe and now kerr and i could lay out because they're both interesting characters but like i i think that she believes that she could outwit him but i don't think she can just the way that drac and joe uh like it uh, kind of like stands in this series as is but like we get like a good interaction between uh between wise and hermit i actually think that they could have a, a good chemistry between them you have like the the smart nerdy girl and then the like more like hands-on like uh smart ass kind of like banter wise tech dude i think they could get along and probably form could you imagine it like they make like a they're a combo maybe like they end up like a thing but they're like a even if not like a thing they're like a duo unit and wise makes like a sick mech and he's like does all the operation and like weapon upgrades while hermit does like all of the tactical decisions and like system layouts for it and, and stuff i think that'd be really cool and, and i thought that was really interesting though just because that in that small interaction there's a lot that could come out of that just kind of like thinking of the possibility you know the the synergy between these characters and then the chapter ends with uh, Labilia showing up. Uh, you know, we have not having seen her in a while, but you know she got put in a little bit of a dangerous area. Maybe she's going to be a little bit nicer uh, moving forward. I'm hoping that she becomes a little bit less of a bitch every time she shows up, but it doesn't seem to be that way because she talks about she has information on how, you know how to get to the labor district where Shiki and Omora got sent for Rebecca, but uh, in exchange she. Rebecca was going to have to do her a favor. I'm hoping it's much more of like a not fucked up kind of favor, but more of like, oh, I want to do a show. I need an assistant. Give give you an embarrassing role. Maybe more in like a comedic way. But it like, because she's not, she shouldn't be evil. She should come off as, you know, a a mean competitor to Rebecca, a mean rival, not like a, uh, oh, you're my big rival character I want to compete with. Just some character that's like, she's always picking on her. She's just a bully. Where I'm, I want to do something to you. I'm planning a scheme where it doesn't end with your destruction. It ends on you getting humiliated and just getting like to sneer at you and poke at you and stuff. I think that's where her character, I think, should stay and not become like a villain or a good guy. Just kind of always be this bitchy competitor character. I like the idea of for Rebecca's because the, the thing about it is like you have all these characters and there's like the aspects of it like we're in a dangerous situation. We've got all these big villain or hero kind of stuff things going on and rebecca could have that but i like that her own kind of like areas thing with the beak anyone who's a beekeeper being much more of like a 
work competition. It's just so you have the the seriousness of like whatever arcs going and whatever like life and death scenarios. But then you have the more just kind of like characters when they're uh, like Lobelia, where it's just like, oh, how can I sabotage their video or use their video to amp up my video? Where it's just more for fun, and you can kind of like see it on a. I hope this doesn't happen, or I hope it does happen, with having less like heavy consequence value but more entertaining one like that kind of like again where it could be like oh this character is in this arc they're doing their own schemes they have their own plot but it, their plot is versus the main like focus of the arc it's like oh this character wants to do this horrible bad thing they want to like blow up this city and get revenge for whatever like a, a dark serious thing that is like your main focus is here but you want to look over here because like you have these characters who just are up to like our entire plot of this, like, arc of 50 chapters is to, uh, accidentally, like, while Rebecca's not looking, put the lens over her camera so she accidentally, like, doesn't record anything and it's just audio. Something ridiculous like that, or it's just very fun. Uh, and, and yet could still be going on where all the serious stuff goes on. It'd just be fun. I think it'd be a, a good idea for her character. So she doesn't also at the same time become like a good person or too much of a bad person. She's just a bitch. And, and that's just everything that her like character revolves around. Where it's like Jin shows up and it's like, oh shit, what could happen? Like he's dangerous. Like is he going to become friend or a foe? Whereas like Lobelia shows up and it's just like, god damn it, what is she up to this time? Keep an eye on that bitch. Don't let her, don't let her get near anything like important. But other than that, uh, leave a comment below and what you thought about this chapter. I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was much more of possibilities, I think, of, uh, like, of it. Not like, oh man, I can't wait to see like what happens next chapter. I'm much more of like, this was laid out, where could this go? You know, just formulating, kind of like speculating the idea of like a, a, a longer game rather than just the next chapter. But other than that, like I said, uh, I really appreciate the thumbs up the video, but find the like button and the subscribe button and check out my other videos. By that, I appreciate everyone who's already subscribed and I thank you all for listening. Bye.